Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is integrating Excel and ServiceNow using Azure Logic Apps. Let's go. So this episode was inspired by one of the comments uh, that was left on one of my prior videos. I think it was the actual Microsoft Teams and ServiceNow integration piece that I talked about earlier in the year. And uh, this person wanted to know if it was possible to go ahead and open up a series of ServiceNow tickets from an Excel spreadsheet itself. So we're gonna go ahead and work this out in this episode. Now there are a couple different approaches that can be used to solve this problem. Obviously we've got the API driven approach which we're gonna use here today. Uh, this is using the ServiceNow connector that's available in both Power Automate and Logic Apps. So even though I'm going to be doing this in Logic Apps today, you could use a very similar approach in Power Automate and accomplish the same thing. In addition, we also have RPA, and I think one of the big deciding factors for when to use RPA versus API driven in this context is really around our Excel spreadsheet. So when we use the Excel connector in Power Automate or Logic Apps, we have to create a data table around our data structure in order for us to you know, generate a schema and then be able to parse the data from that connector itself. If we control this file, then we can go ahead and create a data table. But if we don't control this file, then that becomes more difficult. And so that would be a scenario where RPA would be better suited because the uh, Excel actions found in Power Automate Desktop are quite good and can easily parse a, an Excel spreadsheet and you don't have to require a data table in order for that to happen. But for this video, we're going to go ahead and use the API-driven approach. I think the ServiceNow connector is actually pretty good and uh, you'll see that in this particular video. Let's go ahead and dive deeper into it. So one thing I wanted to just uh, explain a little bit further is this notion of a sys ID. It's like a system ID for a specific entity. Now, when it comes to create our incident record inside of ServiceNow, there's going to be some dependencies on some other entities. So number one would be the caller. This would essentially be the user that is logging the ticket. Now, this is the value I need to pass in for this specific user here, Abel. And naturally, you're not going to store that. Like, that means nothing to you. But what you generally need to do is to be able to retrieve it from a different entity. So we can go ahead and query the user table and provide an email address as our search criteria and then return this value back, this sysid, that we then include as part of our insert itself. So once we get into this demo, you're gonna see I do two lookup calls, one for caller, one for assignment group. And the purpose of both of those is so that I can go ahead and retrieve these system IDs and then be able to go ahead and insert it into the record. That way, when we open up the incident, we'll be able to see, oh, it was able that went ahead and created was the, the person that called or the, the creator. And then we'll look at like the assignment group. Oh, this is assigned to the database group. And so this is just one of those things that you have to do when working with the ServiceNow connector. So I wanted to just explain that a little bit further itself. And here you can see that exact example of what I'm talking about. We have to go ahead and do a call to get the user ID. And that's the sys ID for the user ID. And then we need to go ahead and do something similar with the assignment groups so that we can then go ahead and create a record. But I'll explain that a little bit more in the demo itself. So let's go, let's jump right into Logic Apps and see how all of this works. So let's start with Excel and as a reminder, we do need to have a data table. So how do you create a data table? What you do is you go ahead and create your headers and you can just go ahead and select them, then head over to insert, then hit table. And then it'll ask if your header, if your table contains header, and you would check that on so that these fields don't get processed itself. Now what we need to do is create a couple records uh, for our demo to run. So I'm just going to add uh, ID of four and five. Uh, these are important, and we'll see this in the when we go through the configuration. These essentially are our like unique keys, and we're going to want to update this table um, with a status of ticket created. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to have basically a value that we can use in order to update just that row. So when we have essentially tickets or rows that we want to pick up, we'll use a status of pending. After it's processed, we're going to see the status 
column updated to say ticket created and then we're also going to see a ticket number included as well. Now I've got this user that's already configured inside of ServiceNow so I'm going to continue to use that email address. This is pretty important because uh, back to that whole SysID thing we're going to query based upon this value. Now for the description of our ticket we're just going to say uh, need access to HR database uh, we're going to log this to the database team. We'll then say we need access to finance database. And then once again, we'll go ahead and log it to the database team. Now, urgency, this is just kind of the, the urgency. One is low, three, or sorry, one is high, three is low. So let's just go ahead and say two and one. Now, this will then get picked up from our logic app. And uh, I've got our logic cap configured to basically run once per hour. So uh, we've got some time, but we'll go ahead and check out the logic cap configuration now. Okay, here we are in our logic cap. Uh, how we kick up this process is every hour we'll go ahead and kick it off. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and look for that Excel spreadsheet. Now I chose to store it in OneDrive. You could also store it in SharePoint if you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically open up that file, look for that table. This is the default uh, table name. You can change it if you want. And then what we're going to do is we're going to provide an OData query. Now, if you recall, we had a status column and we want to look for any records that are equal to pending. So what that means is after we go ahead and update a record to say ticket created, we're not going to pick that record up in a subsequent you know, run of the logic app itself. So it's kind of like a, a SQL query from that perspective. Now, this is list rows. So what it's going to do, it's going to return back an array of, well, zero to many records. And so we're, what we're going to do is loop through each one. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we need to get that sysid for the user. And so what we're going to do is we're going to query the user table and look where that email address is equal to caller. So this was that column where we had the email address for able. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a sys ID returned from this. Now we don't want to create like a nested loop. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to use an expression that allows us to go ahead and retrieve this value and store it against uh, in a compose action itself. Now I've pasted this expression just in notepad just to, to be able to further explain it we know that we can have one or more records coming back from this specific action. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go after the first one. So that's the first expression. Then what we need to do is we're going to basically get like the result. The result is essentially that array of records. So it's going to be the first record in this specific result array. And then what we can go ahead and do is just pick off the sys ID from that perspective. Now, what's super important is that this part of the expression is referring to the name of this specific action. And you can see that where there's underscores, those are essentially our spaces. So you can definitely simplify things by removing spaces, uh, but this is a reference. And so if you are sort of repeating these steps, you need to make sure that this value here is the same as this value itself. And wherever you have spaces, put an underscore so that this path uh, basically can be extracted properly. So that will then store our sysid for our user in this compose action. Now we're going to do something similar with assignment groups, right? So this was the column where we had database as the group that we want to assign the ticket to. So we can go ahead and query the group uh, table and then query for name equal to group itself. We're going to do something quite similar um, from uh, an expression perspective. And in this case, we need to go ahead and we can use a, the, basically the same expression, but what we have to replace here is the name of the action we're going after. So in this case, it's list records assignment groups. Once again, if you have a space, you need to replace it with an underscore. And then we're going to get the first record that's part of that result array. And then we're going to pick off the sysid and store it into that compose action itself. Now that uh, is great. So at this point we've got like the prerequisite or the reference data 
in place, we can now go ahead and create the incidents. We're gonna create a record. It's gonna be against the incident table. And in this case, we're going to map the following IDs, our calling caller. So this is our sys ID coming from that compose action. The description, so you know, I need access to the HR database. Assignment group, once again, going to go ahead and get the sys ID for the assignment group. And then we've got that urgency with one being high, three being low. Now that's going to go ahead and create a ticket for us. And as part of the output from that call is we're going to get a number, basically an incident number. And we can go ahead and update our row in the Excel spreadsheet so that the ticket number is populated. We update the status to be ticket created. Now I mentioned before that we need like a unique ID so that we can properly update the correct record. And so here we can choose which column we want to use that for. In this case, it's gonna be the ID column. And then we're going to use the value that was retrieved back from this list action itself. So that's uh, basically some background on how you'd go ahead and build it. Now what we can do is just go ahead and run this and uh, we'll see uh, uh, basically one instance run and then we should see our spreadsheet update. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the trigger. We don't have to wait for the hour to complete. Let's go ahead and refresh. And now it has succeeded. Uh, so that's good news. So we can see that it's gone ahead and run. Uh, let's just take a closer look at the, a few different actions here. So here that's that sys ID that we were able to extract from that call. Similarly, you know, we have a different sys ID for the group. And then these are the values that are passed in uh, into our call itself. And then lastly, when we go ahead and update our spreadsheet, we're going to get a ticket number here. So if we head back to our spreadsheet, uh, we can see that we've got a couple tickets that have been created for us and we've updated the rows successfully. Now, if we log into ServiceNow and then on the left-hand side, we can go ahead and find incidents uh, here and then we can go ahead and, and just look for all. Now, in this case, these are the last two incidents that were created and we can see need access to HR database, need access to finance, right? We can go ahead and click on them. And then when we click on them, we'll see that we've got like our caller populated, uh, which is good, right? So it, it makes sense. We've done that linkage. And then the other thing that happens is that this, uh, it's not shown on the screen here, but this has been assigned to that uh, database group. So if we went into their group and saw their queue, we would find this ticket had been assigned to them. So that concludes another episode on the channel. Hopefully you found this useful. Take care and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.